Hello everybody, and what we're going to be doing today to kind of warm ourselves up to the modeling process is we're going to make some minor adjustments uh, to the actual eye itself. Uh, now previously we've used the eye to kind of sculpt out part of the skull, like what you see over here, and uh, it was able to help us quite a bit with this kind of lower poly model that we're working with. Uh, what we'll do at this time, however, is I'd like to add a little bit more detail to this. Now, let me show you what I mean. Now, what we're going to be doing specifically here is we're going to go into the actual eye itself and make the iris a little bit more defined. In theory, we could actually make the iris with a texture, but the only issue with that is the iris itself would be more at the tip, and it just really wouldn't look as good as it could. Uh, by the way, I did get these pictures through a simple Google search saying side view of an eye, uh, in case any of you do need these references again. And this reference over here it does come up pretty nicely, as you can see. Again, the iris is never going to be on the tip over here. It usually is a little on the inward spot. Now, we're going to basically uh, emulate that area the best we can. Don't worry about getting the outer lens. That's a topic for another time. So let's see how we would approach this in 3D. Now, basically, just to give you an idea of how this is set up, in case any of you do wish to follow along, uh, I do have the eye, and the sphere that was used for this is a standard sphere, no major changes compared to what we did previously. And the shading that I have right now, uh, I don't have the, the X-ray joints turned on, because or the X-ray element, because I don't need that turned on at this time. I do have an option called wireframe on shaded turned on, uh, for the purpose of well, being able to see the geometry that's going on here. So usually do find that this is a little bit helpful in this case. Now I do have a little bit of collision over here. Once I actually work with the eye, that's not going to matter. And that's fine. So the way I'm going to get started is I'm going to select, ooh, before I forget, you will want to turn off any kind of symmetry that you might t have turned on. I left that on for purposely for that particular part. <laughs> and uh, just basically select around the eye itself. Now, easiest way to approach this is select the polygon, shift double click the polygon next to it. It should select in a ring like this. Now you can select all these other areas manually. And by the way, I'll be giving these shortcut keys as I talk. I can hit Q to be able to select this a little bit easier. Or alternatively, if you hold down the shift and period button or uh, greater than button as well, so shift, and uh, period, this is the grow option. And this basically grows out your selections like so. So not only do I have my original over here, but I have the outer part like so, and the inner part like so. Perfect for what we need to do next. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, you have one of two options. You can either uh, just bring this back right away like this. And again, this kind of makes that whole area for our eye. Or alternatively, you can also take this moment to use the scale option. Again, that would be the R button for this. I'm just scaling this in ever so slightly. I don't like to completely uh, flatten this out, by the way. Uh, though if you feel that your character can benefit from this, you're more than welcome to go that direction. But once you scale just a little bit, there's no very specific uh, amount that you scale in. You'll have to eyeball this. I'm going to use W for move. Or again, you could just select that over here. Your move, your rotate, your scale can all be found in these areas. And you could just bring this back like so. And again, this will basically make this particular part like this. So that ends up working pretty nice. Um, so that basically is, again, going to get us started with this. But we're not quite done yet. This basically just makes that inner part. What we need to do next is we need to also bring out the darker area for the actual iris itself. Now, once again, you could select all the triangles in the middle, or alternatively, since this area is selected already for us, I can hit, uh, oop, actually before that, I'm gonna scale this out just a bit as well. Uh, this, the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I'm adding this extra scale is uh, it's gonna help out with a, when we have to eventually texture this part as well. So that's why we're doing this. If you don't feel this step is necessary, you don't need to worry about doing this. This is completely up to you. But uh, for the next part, again, I'm gonna hit shift and comma to deselect the amount that's uh, selected and do that a second time. So in this case, only the triangles are selected. Now the next part is gonna be completely dependent on each person. Uh, and how big you actually need your iris. 
So if you're satisfied with this being the size of the iris, aka the darker area, like what we see over here, uh, then that's perfectly fine. Um, if you feel that needs to be bigger or smaller, you still have the option to change that at this right now. So this actually looks pretty good, but if you feel it's too small, just use the uniform scale, that's the scale that's in the middle, to make that bigger if necessary. I'll make that just a smidge bigger. Yeah, there we go. And all we would need to do at this point is just use the extrude and just bring this out slightly. Don't bring it out too much, because again, you don't want this to be overdone. And that's pretty much most of the stuff that I would be going over at this time. Again, we just basically wanted this to come out a little bit more like so to make the iris more pronounced. And again, if you're satisfied with it, fantastic. If you're not, like for example, you think the iris is too big or too small, you can always hit shift and period and shrink this down or make it bigger depending on your needs. So this is one of those times you really have to take a look at the character uh, itself and really think, does this iris need to be this big or this tiny? And in my case, this is actually working pretty nice, so I'm pretty happy with this. And so that's pretty much it, at least for that part. Now, last step. Now, this is optional, but again, if you're thinking about potentially doing things for interactivity, potentially game elements, you would want to get rid of any unnecessary parts that are here. Now, what I'm talking about specifically here is the back of the eye. Now, these areas over here from the middle, this is basically where the middle is, overwards, there's a good chance that there will be people that will see these because... Well, basically, again, the eye is going to be round. And again, if we rotate this side to side like this, people will want, you'll be, want to make sure that you see a good chunk of the actual outer eye like so. Now, in, my, now in this case, uh, going past the middle, we, I would basically go to the next polygon that's over here. But this area and onwards is less likely going to be seen. So I would basically trim the fat a little bit and... Uh, yeah, basically just get rid of anything that's not going to be seen at this point. So select this polygon, shift double click the one below it, then I hit peer, delete, and there goes part of the eye. Then I could select the back part over here, just one quick little tap. Well, double tap, I should say. Delete. And that should be it. Let me show you what I mean. So basically now, if I try to rotate this eye, anything that's supposed to be important people aren't going to notice. So I can go side to side, up and down, as far as a human usually would be able to go. Again, if you go too far, then yeah, you're definitely going to notice that kind of stuff. So that's something else you got to consider is if you bring your eye all the way up like so, how far can you go before people start to notice? Now, if you think that you could still use some parts of the eye, like for example over here, I'm thinking maybe I need this part after all. So undo your friend. That's uh, Control or Command Z. I think it's going to be Control Z either software, so check that out. Uh, so I'm going back one just to be safe. Shift double click, and it's going around like this. So I'll do that one more time. Select your polygon, go below it. Shift double click the part below it. That should select in a ring like fashion, like so. Delete and delete. So now I have a little bit of an extra buffer. So if I was to move my eye a little bit too high like this, I'm still good. I, I, I can still work with this quite easily. But again, that's up to you. This part over here, completely optional. But again, I want to be able to work more efficiently, which is the reason why I'm doing this. And once that's done, a good habit to get into is, uh, I don't need any of this information anymore. So I'm gonna go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, and this eye is pretty much ready to rig. So that's pretty much most of the stuff I wanted to show over here. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll be going on to the next topics shortly.